Welcome to Fight Week here on BT Sport. We're in New York City for your official UFC 268 preview. That feels good saying that, doesn't it? We are in New York City. This weekend, Madison Square Garden is the destination for two title fights, both rematches, a people's main event, and some breakout fights that have huge significance in their respective weight divisions. First and foremost, though, mate, we've got yes. to address something, right? His wife told him not to wear hats on national television, and he's here already. 44 years of age, dressing like a 12-year-old. Dressing like a 12-year-old, and wearing the Boston Red Sox. Are you a baseball fan? I'm a rebel. Well, exactly. A rebel. You're wearing New York, uh, what, what is it? The Yankees. Yankees. The Yankees. Come on, Nick, get it together, man. I need me hat budget. I need a new hat. Look at this. Unbelievable scenes. Listen, we've got some sensational fights to preview. Madison Square Garden, iconic venue, Mike. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it doesn't get bigger than that, you know. We say that all the time, but it's true. I mean, Madison Square Garden really has been home to so many legendary fights over the years, particularly good one in 2017 where I got choked out unconscious. <laughs> but other than that, it's a great venue. And, you know, New York, there's just a special energy about the place. Yeah. And this fight card this weekend really is something special as well. So it's going to deliver on all fronts, and I'm just so excited to be a part of it. Well, we've got a couple of rematches to get stuck into. Let's get stuck into that main event first and foremost. Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington going at it once again. Talk to me about the show. Oh, Kamara Usman, the pound for pound number one on the planet yeah. right now. It seems this guy's got no weak areas. He's getting better and better. Came to the sport as a big, strong physical specimen, but a guy that relied on his wrestling. Now he's knocking people out and he's yeah. doing it with style. As I say, the number one pound for pound guy, he's defending that throne and he's taking on Colby Covington in a rematch. The first fight was sensational. Yeah. It was an even fight going into that fifth round, probably two apiece. But of course, the boxing of Kamara Usman caught him with that right hand. Broke his jaw, knocked him out. They hate one another, so there's a lot of bad blood coming into this one, and I cannot wait for it. Absolutely. Talk to me about Colby Covington, Nick, because we've not seen too much of him since that fight back in 2019. I think we've only been out uh, once, hasn't he? Since then, and he's finding himself back in with a shot at the title. Yeah, and he's completely fell off the radar, similar to his, his idol Donald Trump has fell off the radar, you know, he's kind of gone the same way. That's what's going to be interesting about this week, you know, because he has been inactive. He's had one fight since Kamaru, you know, he did retire Tyron Woodley, a big performance there, but he hasn't been busy. He hasn't been doing any media. We haven't seen anything of him yet. Mm. I'm excited to see him this week. Have a little look at the whites in his eyes, see what his shtick is all about, because mm. surely the Trump thing's done now, right? So has he got to reinvent himself as some well, other kind of heel? Well, I'll tell you what, in America, because I live here. Trump's coming back in 24. Trust me, they're all going mad for it. But still, we're not here to discuss politics. Colby Covington, I think partly why we haven't seen him is because he's away. He's working. He's not yeah. focusing on the media stuff. He's got a very tough task at hand. He's got to beat Kamara Usman. Mm. That's more important. And if he beats Kamara Usman, he can have whatever shtick he wants because he's yeah. the champion True. of the world. Um, but Kamara's just got better and better since that first time. And of course, when he went to fight Gilbert Burns, they were in the same gym. Yeah. That meant he went and trained with Trevor Whitman instead yeah. of uh, Henry Hoof. Yeah. And we've seen the improvements since then you know I mean the, the 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 performance he had against Gilbert Burns was incredible even though he did get caught in the first round but it showed what he's made of as a champion and then last time out against Masvidal mm -hmm. I mean come on what a knockout so you can see the striking now catching up with the wrestling that's why he's the pound for pound number one he's also resonating a lot more with fans isn't it Kamara Wasman because he's becoming a finisher he was a guy that was mm -hmm. coasting through fights and I don't want to say dull but we're here for knockouts. That's what we're here for, aren't we? And he's most certainly done that in his last two fights. Yeah, and listen, Colby attached the Marty Snoozman name to him, mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of stuck, it kind of fit, fit then. Doesn't fit anymore. As Mike said, he's clearly the pound for pound best fighter on the planet today, across all weight divisions. And I think he's out to prove a point and getting him built up, getting him motivated to perform. There's nobody better than Colby Covington because yeah. he just gets under his skin. He's not a teammate anymore. That relationship's all gone. It's a guy that he knows is going to go after him verbally. And I think we'll see the very best that Kamado was on Saturday. From an ability point of view, the first fight, as you said, it was even going into that fifth until obviously the finish sure. ended up coming. Cardio's going to play a massive, massive role in this. We know that Colby's got it for days. He's got to set that relentless mm. pace, hasn't he, early doors, in order to get the job done this time round. Yeah, listen, and that's what he always does. He always fights at a high pace. He closes the distance. He gets in the face and he fights in the pocket. Doesn't deliver knockout blows, but it's a tremendous amount of volume that overwhelms the opponents. And then, of course, he's got the takedowns there when he needs them. In this fight, I think we're going to see a kickboxing fight. I don't think we're Again. going to see much yeah. wrestling because Again, yeah. why is that? Well, they can both wrestle, so they're just going to waste so much energy trying to take one another down, and it's 
not going to happen. Mm. You see it all the time. It's so cliche to say two black belts, two wrestlers, they fired out on the feet, but that's what's going to happen. You know, uh, yeah, and I'm here for it. I can't wait. I just want to keep be... saying that. I'm going to stop saying <laughs> something else, Bob, I can't wait. I'm very much looking forward to it, Nick. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, if it is anywhere near as good as the first fight, yeah. we're in for an absolute treat. My fear is, while Colby's been away, yes, he's been working, yes, you'd like to think he's got his head down, but he has been very inactive. Nothing beats match fitness, you know, and the champ has good been point. busy. The champ has been in the octagon. The champ has been improving. We haven't seen much of Colby. You know, it's, it's, that's the million dollar question for me. Has Colby gotten better or has he stagnated? Successful activity breeds success mm. as, as a fighter. The more times you step in there, you know, and you get familiar with the surroundings, he's now really, you know, he he is the champ. He feels that he's, you know, he's become that person and he's embracing that persona because he is the number one champ, uh, pound for pound guy. He's knocking people out. You know, he's world famous now. This is a very different uh, uh, Marty Snoozeman that yeah. was out there saying, oh, that was me at 30%. Remember those days? Yeah. Every time he would dominate sure. people, say, oh, that was just me at 30%. This is a different guy. This is a finisher now and a man that going into this one, you know, really does not like Colby Covington. They don't like one another. From Colby's side of things, it's just competitiveness, and that's the guy that's got the belt. For uh, Kamara Usman, I think he looks at him very, very differently. I won't get into that, but uh, yeah, there's, I think he detests him. He really, really doesn't like him. And last time he said, I broke your face. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do this time. Also, as well, it's worth pointing out that he's in a camp of champions. You know, Gaethje is a monster. You know, he's like a champion without the belt. Rose is the champion, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and that iron sharpens iron. Of course, of course, they're not sparring with one another, but just being around each other and the work ethic, it all rubs off. Meanwhile, Colby is doing Colby on his own. Well, well Col Colby beat Aaron Woodley, right? Mm -hmm. And he went out there and he dominated the fight from start to finish. It yeah. was, and he finished him in the fifth round, but it was a rib injury. But still, listen, he, he was, was dominating he Tyron, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no disrespect to Tyron Woodley, but that happened a few times. So you can't really gauge that and look at that and say, wow. Because yeah. Tyron Woodley was the champ. He was a dom dominant champion and a great champion that we had in the sport. But he did go on that skid and he's no longer in the UFC. So yeah. yes, it was impressive what Colby did, but it wasn't the first time it's happened. So has he improved? Has he been working hard? Has he got better? Is he going to give Kamaru more of a challenge? Yeah. We don't know. Listen, I'm going to get your predictions in a minute, but there's one more point that I just want to make on this. All right. Trevor Whitman, you just brought him up. He's got the men event. He's got a fighter in the co-men event. Yeah. And he's got a fighter in the people's men oh, event. Oh, his bank manager's Listen, asked me on Monday, I'll tell is. you that. But talk to me about preparation. When you're backstage wanting to, you know, get on the pads with your coach and go through those final drills, he's not going to be in those changing no. rooms for... Uh, his fighters well, in the co-men and men event because he's going to be obviously in the fight of with, with Getchy. Absolutely. And this will be something that they've talked about and they've prepared for. Yes. But another element is what happens if one of them loses? Right? Then they come back into that changing room. It's like, oh, then you start to doubt everything you've been doing. Yes. Did we have the wrong approach? He got tired. We thought none of us were going were to get tired. You know what I mean? So obviously it's great for the team. There's going to be a camaraderie and they've all got ready together and we're going to New York and we're all going to win and all the rest of it. Yeah. But there's two dogs in every race. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? If it starts falling apart at the seams, then that can affect the confidence of Kamaru and of Rose and so on and so forth. I'm not saying it will happen, yeah, but that is something yeah. to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right, boys, come on. Off the fences. I'll let him go, I'll let him go first, all right? Go ahead. Go on then. What do you think? Who's going to win the fight? I, I can't back Colby after he sidestepped. Let's be honest, sidestepped Leon Edwards. That was supposed to be eliminated. It was put on the table. And he went, no, I don't want that. I'm just going to fight for the champion. Anyone that sidesteps a challenge and waits their time and gets their shot because the first, I just don't like the way he did his business. I wanted him to fight Leon. He didn't. He's got a title shot that he probably doesn't deserve. I'm not going with him. No way. I'm oh. going to go with the pound for pound best fighter on the planet today. How can you not go yeah, with yeah, the man? Yeah, but gonna... in terms of uh, what you think of him personally, okay, he should have fought Masvidal and should have fought Leon Edwards, but he hasn't. But do you think he's going to beat him because of his skill, not because you detest him? <laughs> Listen, he's not my favourite guy either. Do you know what I mean? But I'm going to pick him based on the analytics that I have studied for hours oh, and hours. You know, I've watched his tape. I broke it down. Do you know what I mean? I know how he moves left, right, up, down, zigzags all over the place. I'm picking Kamara Usman, baby. <laughs> <laughs> By knockout. Oh, that's where you were going. <laughs> I was like, go on, do it, do Ron it. Ronnie's going to take him down. I'm going to pound him out on the ground. I, yes. think, I think he's going to knock him earlier down. Earlier than last time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So you both think a Kamaru Wilsman stoppage. Stoppage I earlier do. than last time, so yes. earlier than the fifth. Third round TKO, I'm going. I think, I think he's going to catch him on the, on the feet. Okay. I think his striking has massively improved since yes. he's been training with Trevor Whitman. And then as the fight progresses, I think one of those punches is going to put him down and, and he's going to follow him down there and he's going to beat the hell out of him on the ground. Mm. Because, you know, there's not much of a jiu-jitsu threat from Colby. Yes, he has great grappling in terms of mixed martial arts and wrestling, but there's no submission threat. So if he hits the deck, which I think he will at some point, but he's tough, so he won't.
won't be unconscious. He'll follow him down. Remember, Kamara never followed Gilbert down because yes. that's a dangerous yeah. place to be. Yeah. But he'll go down there and he'll go to town on uh, Colby's head. Mm. It's going to be a cracking main event. That's what's coming your way at UFC 268. One thing as well to point out, Mike's going to be catching up with the champ. Come on, yes. at some point this week. And one of the things that we're looking forward to finding out is what he does next. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Because he's lapping everybody in this division. I'll yep. save that though. We won't discuss it now. We'll let Kamaru obviously answer that question when you, when you get. <laughs> yeah. But that would be a lap as well. Absolutely. He's he already been there. He's be already fair. been there. Absolutely. Right, co main event. We've got another title on the line. Another rematch. Talk to me about the champ. Oh. Rose, Nama Hunas, the coming of age earlier on this year with probably the knockout of the year. Just incredible. I mean, the body of work that she's had since she came to the UFC and she's still getting better all the time. Yeah, she had that one slip to Jessica Andrade, but she rebounded in style. She beat her and she, she obviously knocked out Yuan and Jacek to become the champion to start with. Yep. And then she knocks out Zhang Wei Li with probably the first significant shot that she threw. She yes. timed it perfectly. It was a beautiful little head kick. Okay, afterwards, Zhang had said, you know, she had some excuses. You normally have excuses when you get knocked out because that's not what you want yep. uh, but yeah Rose Nama Yunus in every way she really embodies the martial arts spirit and I love watching her fight mm. as Mike just said last time it is a rematch this Zhang was knocked out badly yes how will she be approaching this well you know I think her mind coach, her sports psychologist, will have done a lot of the work in this camp because we know she's fit, we know she's strong, we know she's incredibly talented, and she also carries a huge weight of expectation from on, from the UFC because she unlocks an entire nation there, the mm. biggest nation on the planet. Mm. You know, the potential for her to be a superstar and to push the UFC in China yeah. is there for all to see, you know? and. Uh, so I think she feels that pressure, she knows, but she knows she's talented as well. I think what she's got to get over for me, she's got to get over that first minute. That's going to be the hardest minute of her life. She's got to get through that first minute with Rose, get those demons out, out of her head, because she's lost twice an entire career. Her first ever fight, a pro debut, and her last fight against Rose when she lost the belt. She needs to just think about getting through that minute and then applying her game plan, because we know she's physically bigger, stronger than Rose. Mm. She's just got to get close enough to do the do damage. Mm. Well, check this out. So so uh, somebody that shall remain nameless said to me that, because Zhang's training out here in America, yeah. he's in Arizona. And he said that when she started doing the drills, she'd never seen anything like it in her life. You know, and these are very, very basic drills. So she's got to where she is yeah. by being such a great athlete. And of course, a natural fighter. And she's learned how to punch and kick and everything. But the secret sauce with mixed martial arts is combining it all, going from the striking to the wrestling. When you're taking down, getting back to your feet, the sweeps, like, all that stuff putting it all together in a fluid motion she's never done any of those drills wow. it was like she was like oh my god i've never seen any you know we're talking basic stuff like one two double leg sprawl get back to your feet she'd never done that kind of training that real cross training before so i think we're going to see an improved version of uh two point zero, yeah. Wow, yeah. That's mm. a scary thought. how impressive have you been with rose though because one of the big criticisms i suppose all her career is what's been going on between her ears yes now she seems to have aligned that i mean we saw in the build-up to the last fight, I am the best, I am the best. That mantra that she was chanting, but it seems to have obviously sorted herself out and that confidence is there now. She's ready to be champion, whereas last time maybe she wasn't. Mm, yeah, yeah, I don't know if maybe she wasn't, but I say it all the time, the man controls everything and this really is the most important thing. That's why you see some fighters that are sensational in the gym, but they just can't put it together on fight night mm. because this, and you've got that self-doubt and we all have that inner dialogue, you know, and even though we're walking out there and these are the best fighters in the world, there's, there's still doubt. And if you start having the doubt and net, you let the negativity creep in, you don't fight to the best of your ability. It seems yeah. like she's conquered that. It's not an easy thing to do because you walk, it's daunting. You're walking out there, you're pretty much naked. There's 20,000 people, there's millions watching all over the world and you're going to fight the number one contender. And it's weird that somebody like her uh, as the champion would still suffer with that kind of anxiety. Yeah. But trust me, it, it's really, really hard to control. So anyway, it seems like she's doing great in that regard. Physically, we know she's incredible. I yeah. mean, I love watching her fight. I don't think she's got any weak areas. Again, we mentioned Trevor Whitman. You know, she's got fantastic support network. Pat Barry, her, her fiance, I think yeah, he yeah. is, or a long time boyfriend. He knows the fight game inside out yeah. as well. So you put all that together and then the, 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 the violence, the nasty that she does have within her because she's a she's a little firecracker she when is. she gets Absolutely. going you know what I mean yeah she's the real deal what's what's the difference for her though hunter versus hunted she's the champ now mm. there's a target on her back and obviously she's already beaten this girl once hey heavy is the crown right well, when you're yep. the champ everybody wants it so every fight you're having now is against the next best person in the world the person that's sacrificed her entire life because they want what you've got and they yeah. want to take it and they're they're pulling out all the stops to take your belt as i say heavy is the crown welcome yeah. to being a champion of the world right come on then how's this play out because we're all extremely excited about it from the first fight so how's this play out for you <clears throat> again i think uh 
I think the longer the fight goes, the more I favour Wiley. And I like the fact that Mike's give us a bit of an insight there into the training and stuff. That does make me think, wow, she's going to be bigger and stronger and better than ever before. Um, but I'm a Rose fanboy, man. I can't get away from Rose Nama Yunus being my, one of my favourite fighters in the UFC period. And I just love where she is right now. As you say, she's a sensational champion. She's done rematches before and she's absolutely smashed Joanna the second time as well as the first time. So I'm going to go with Rose, but I'm going to go on points. It's going to be a hell of a fight. Have you noticed that he picks a lot with his heart, this man? Yeah, yes. no, he does. But so <laughs> what? Hey, listen, that's what we all do, to be oh, yeah. fair. Oh, yeah. Listen, I got Rose Namajunas all day. I remember when she lost to Jessica Andrade down in Brazil. I was there with the ESPN. And I'm watching, and I remember just watching her footwork, the way she was gliding around the octagon. And I thought to myself, Nobody yeah. ever is going to beat this woman. She just moves so well, like better than any guy in the division. The footwork is just incredible. Then, of course, she gets picked up and slammed on her head and unconscious. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But that's that's MMA. That that's why we yeah. love it. That you know happen. what I mean? Yeah, but still, the point remains. She is technically that good. She is believing herself. She's on a roll. And, uh, yeah, I think we're going to see a great fight. I think Zhang Wei Li isn't going to get knocked out with the first strike that she feels. But uh, she's going to lose. Might be a decision, but she's going to lose. There you go. There's your main, there's your core main events at UFC 268. We've got another cracker to get stuck into right now, boys. And this has got massive ramifications for the lightweight division. We know that there's a title fight coming up in December. We know who's in that title fight. We've just seen a lightweight at the weekend in Islam Makachev do a sensational performance. Bit of pressure on both of these guys, but first and foremost, talk to me about the higher ranked of the two in Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, the human highlight reel. I mean, come on, if you're not a Justin Gaethje fan, do you even MMA? Because, <laughs> because the thing is, he's just incredible, right? The guy's got incredible wrestling, but he never uses it offensively, just uses it to stay on the feet because he wants to crack you in the face. And the boxing is subliminal. And like I say, Trevor Whitman, once again, I mean, look at that fight that he had against uh, Tony Ferguson. Yeah. The boxing on display there, the power and the accuracy of the shots, it was beautiful to watch, you know? And here's a guy, okay, you know, he lost to Habib. No shame in that. Everyone Plus. loses to Habib, you know. And yeah, he got finished quickly. But I, again, um, he's coming into this one because he feels like he deserves to be the champion. Yeah, yeah. You know, he feels like he's being overlooked a little in Absolutely. the division because there is a lot of star power at lightweight. Uh, so I think we're going to see a very hungry, motivated and fired up Justin Gagey. And that is a dangerous thing. And Michael Chandler is a man that's had success in other franchises. He burst onto the scene, didn't he? on Fight Island, knocking out Dan Hooker. Yeah. And he had his shot at the title, and he just fell short, even though, first round, he was near enough there and be on the verge of becoming champion. Exactly. For me, he won that first round against Charles Oliveira anyway. Obviously, he got stopped in the second round, but he was within touch and distance of UFC gold, you know? And when you meet Michael Chandler, when you're around Michael Chandler, he it's like you're in the presence of a champion. He is a poster boy for an organization. He's been there and done it before. He's got so much experience and he knows what it takes to be a champion. And he's here for one reason, he could have stayed where he was and had a good life, because he was having a good life anyway, but he wants to test himself. Mm. He knows that this is the big show, the UFC, and he wants to come in and get UFC gold. And he knows the quickest way back to a title shot is to go through Justin Gaethje. It's not gonna be easy, but if we can beat Justin Gaethje on Saturday night, he's right back in the frame again. As a stylistic matchup for fans, this is like just chucking two frogs in a blender, this, isn't it? This is just <laughs> going to be absolute war. That just makes me think of that scene in Gremlins. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, well, that's what it is, what, that is what it's going to be like because, again, we say, said it before in the last show, you know, two grapplers, mm, you know, yeah. they're going to stand on their feet. I don't think you can really call Jake Gagey a grappler. No, All right, he can grapple, but he's a, he likes to go for the finish. And, and Michael Chandler, yeah, he's probably going to try and mix things up. You know, and he's going to try and land that big heavy overhand right that he has, but uh, it's going to be fun. I I'm leaning towards Justin Gagey all day long. I mean, I'd like to see what happens this week. I'd like to see him at the press yeah. conference and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Are we giving predictions today? We will do it in a minute. Oh, in a minute. Okay, I, just, right. I want to talk to you about the emotional aspect for Gagey because Nick just brought up a good point there, right? This is a man that's kind of been overlooked. He got beat off a beep. Big time. Chandler beats Hooker. He gets fast tracked into the oh, title yeah. shot. You would have automatically thought that Gagey would have been that guy. He's going to be coming in here a little bit annoyed this week, isn't he? 100%. He's sitting there and he's looking at Charles Oliveira becoming the champion, which, by the way, he deserves to be for the yeah, body of, of work that he's had, the time spent, most submissions, all that good stuff. But still, if you're just engaged, you're sitting there, how the hell has this happened? How has this guy leapfrogged me? Yeah. How is he walking around with the belt and he's in this big money fight now with Dustin Poirier? That makes you mad. I almost swore there, but it really gets on your nerves. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A fight because you're going through all that sacrifice, the hard work, the, the, you know, you're not seeing family, you're beating up your body, you know, you're going through all this and then someone else is getting what you feel that you should have, yeah. you know? So he's got to go out there and he's got to take it, you know? So that's what's at stake here. That loss to Habib. He was the number two guy in the world below Habib. He got there on merit mm -hmm. and we were all going into that fight going, well, maybe just yeah. in case she is the kryptonite. Maybe he's going to do it. That's and what he I thought. Do it. And Habib retires that night and it's an amazing moment. 
but he just got cast aside. It's just like suddenly he tumbled down and suddenly Chandler's ahead of him, Oliveira's ahead of him, Poirier's ahead of him. Everyone's talking McGregor's about McGregor's back and he's yeah. ahead of him now. And suddenly Jason Gates, she was like, wait a minute, I was the number two guy a minute ago. So I, I think you're right. Yeah. I think he's going to come to New York and he wants to prove a point. Mm. But he's got to be careful with that though. Exactly. Because he comes in too emotional Boom. and against a guy like Chandler that yes. can take him down. And if he gets him down, he's you know he'll hold him down for a little bit. And a guy that can bang, if you're too emotional, you're never the best version of Well, yourself. I was going to talk to you about this from a Chandler point of view as well he has come here with a bit of pressure probably on his own shoulders he's done Dan Hooker mm -hmm. vindicated obviously being in the UFC but last time out obviously fallen short he's in danger of being one and two against the top guys you know what I mean and then people say oh well he wasn't that good anyway maybe he got lucky on Fight Island it's a bit pressure on his shoulders as well coming into this fight this weekend no absolutely listen because he's coming into this and well ever since he came to the UFC I mean you know he's talking the big talk he's talking championship and all that type of thing yep. he knows what's at stake we're not all just talking legacy and stuff yeah. like that we're talking millions of dollars we're talking changing his life we're talking achieving what all professional fighters want to achieve when they start which is to be recognised as the champion of the world and have some fat cash in your bank account do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah. and whilst he's getting the respect and all the rest of it and he's getting to fight at Madison Square Garden in a featured bout that everyone's talking about he hasn't got the millions of dollars in his bank account that everybody wants that childhood dreams are made of you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so he's coming in he's always talked a good talk and he is very good at doing that and he looks apart and all the rest of it but he's got to be just engagey that ain't going to be easy come on then yeah, you're listen, up first this time. I've got Gagey. I've got, got Gagey. I really like Michael Chandler. I do. I think he's an awesome guy. I spoke to him at the Apex, and what a what a gentleman, what a nice guy, what a class act. I'm really just covering my own backside in case he sees this, because he's gonna get beat. Simple as that. You're the nicest guy in the world. You're gonna be the best wrestler in the world, but you ain't taking down Justin Gagey. And I think Gagey again. Go look at that Tony Ferguson fight. Look at the boxing that we saw. Yeah, yes. I feel we saw sophistication in the boxing that Michael Chandler does not possess. And then therefore, I think he beats him. And I think probably, I don't know about a knockout. Yes, knockout, round three. There we go, boom. <laughs> Chandler, does have, Chandler does have the power though, doesn't it? Of course. Can you, can you see him getting the job done or are you going to get you? Um, I don't know whether I should pick really because I, I am the official UFC lightweight tournament commissioner as people know, and as official Did you just look right down the camera and <laughs> do that? Oh. I just battled that. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Uh, he's in America. Uh, he's gone full American exactly, on everybody. Yeah. So, so I don't really know whether I should pick or whether I should just put another just tournament together. Just give us you know? the so, damn pick. Uh, listen, I feel like I've gone with, me and Mike have gone the same way for the first two fights, so I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Chandler yeah. to get it done. I'm going to get catch Kirk, him with a big right hand. Gaethje gets too excited. Is it three rounds? I think that's important how long it this is fight three is. Rounds, because yeah. three rounds of mayhem. I think five rounds could be a different type of fight. Three rounds of mayhem. Anything could happen, but I'm going to go with Chandler by knockout. Uh, care to put dinner on this? You know, the loser pays for dinner or something like that? <laughs> Not the way you eat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the People's Men event. Let's get stuck into a fight that you're extremely excited about because of one of the guys that's involved in it. Shane Burgos versus Billy Q, you're up on Shane because you're a big uh, fan of his. Hurricane Shane Burgos. I mean, he's one of my favourite fighters to watch. Simple as that. I mean, unfortunately for him, he's lost his last two. Yeah. So it doesn't look good. But if you scratch below the surface and you watch the fights and you see what this guy's capable of, then you will not miss this fight. Every time he fights, he lays it all on the line. He's got beautiful boxing. He's as tough as they come. Yeah. Last time we saw him against uh, Edson Barboza, he got caught in the second round. Remember, this is how tough he was. He got caught with a knockout block, but he was, like, he was fighting the impulses from his yeah. brain to fall all over he started stumbling everywhere he's like no 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 and then eventually he just fell over yeah, yeah, that's how go. tough he is but offensively the boxing is incredible i love watching this guy nick over to you what you got on billy q mate i love billy q for all the same reasons he's, he's fit listen he's not ranked yet but this is his opportunity to beat a ranked guy and i think bergeos has got all the pressure in the world coming into this not only has he lost his last two and people are talking about him as a potential title contender but he's lost his last two this is his hometown, he's from the Bronx. Mm. So all his boys are gonna be in the oh, MSG. Yeah. The pressure is gonna be on him big time. I think if Billy Q can keep us cool, Get his jujitsu going. I tell you what, there could be a massive get upset there. Get his jujitsu going. Technical term. That's it. <laughs> you got to get those arm bars flying. Get those jits going, baby. <laughs> That's like some of that corner work that we've been hearing recently. Stop getting hit in the yeah, face. Exactly. Yeah. I'm trying my best yeah, to not yeah, get okay. hit in the Submit face. Submit him. Submit him. There you go. Easy. But regarding the actual tactics and the way that this fight plays out, what does Billy have to do in order to get the job done against someone like Hashem? Get his jujitsu going. <laughs> there you but, go. But, but I'm serious though. But that that would be a good idea. Look to clinch. Look to take him down to the ground. You know, it's not going to be easy though because, you know, uh, Shane is good. He's yeah. good in all areas. He's not really weak. Yeah, he favours the stand-up. That's, that's his goal too. But anyone at this level, we all, we all train all around. So, yeah, but for Billy Q, you've got to try and get it to the ground, mm. capitalise a... Uh, 
potential weakness there. Mm. Um, kicking off the main card, we've got Frankie Edgar, Chito Vera, Frankie Come Edgar, on. absolute legend of the game. But of recent times, man, he's been on a little bit of a skid. It's a big night for him at the weekend. Yeah, unfortunately, he has fallen on tough times lately. But, you know, Frankie Edgar is a legend. And I'll, I mean, I get no saying it, but I, I would guarantee he's going to be Hall in the Hall of Fame, of fame one Definitely. day. 100%. 100%. I mean, come on. And it's fine at Madison Square Gardens. Mm. It's kind of it's like his backyard. He's from Jersey. You know, the body of work is sensational. Yes. He's losing a little bit recently. He's two and four in his last six, so it's tough to see as a Frankie fan. And of course, he's you know he's been knocked out in three of those as well. So that's also alarming. Obviously, it's a lighter weight class. They rely on speed and reflexes. As you're getting older, they're some of the first things to go. The last thing to go is the power. So that's why you see the heavyweights go longer. You know, look at Arlovsky, 47 or 44 or something, whatever he is, he's still going strong. Uh, you don't see that in the lighter weight classes. So for Frankie coming in here against Cheeto Vera. <sighs> It's a tough one. Mm. And yeah. Marlon's got a wonderful opportunity at the weekend to get himself a real scalp. Of course, the biggest scalp of his career, you know, scalping a Hall of Famer, it's not to be sniffed at. And I think he knows that, again, all the pressure's on Frankie Edgar, his friends, his family, everyone's going to be there. And Chito Vera's just got to do his own thing, do his own game. He had a massive win last time out, stopped the momentum of Davy Grant, who was on a hell of a knockout run. And he just completely halted that. So he's in good form, Chito as well, but he knows it's all good and well getting these wins against unranked guys. He needs to beat someone like a Frankie. He needs that name on his record mm. to finally push on and be talked about in potential title contention. Mm. Yeah, but Chito Vera, because I know the guy, he trains with Perillo. I see him in the gym all the time. He's a guy that's working towards one thing only, and that's becoming champion. Yeah, you know, exactly. and he's got no weak areas. And he, he this guy's so disciplined. It's insane. You know what I mean? He's, he's, he does 24-hour fast. He's... he's Diet is perfect. Mm -hmm. He's running five miles even on the days that he's having off. One could say he's overtraining, but he calls it active rest. You know, we went out for dinner one night. Uh, he was two weeks before his fight, and I thought he'll have a cheeky glass of wine. No, sitting there, he's just having steak, avocado, water, like a proper boring so and so. But I'm like, come on, mate, it's two weeks away. You can have a glass of wine. He's like, no, brother, can't do this. He's not from Dagestan. Yeah, he's, he's from Dagestan. He's he from? Maybe he was just doing it. He's, 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 he's rather, I'm like, whoa. Whoa. He's Venezuela. Well. No, no. He's not Venezuelan. Is he not? He's somewhere like Ecuadorian. that. Sorry. Ecuad Ecuadorian. Ecuadorian. Yeah. Ecuadorian. But maybe he was just doing a Hamza impression while he was on the table. He was. He was hammered. Yeah. <laughs> hammered doing Hamza. Absolutely, anyway. man. Listen, boys, you've got to pick a prelims fight. Now, we've got a couple of guys on there obviously making debutants. You've gone for Ayakinta against Green, haven't you? For, uh, your, for yeah. your prelim fight. And why not? I mean, yeah. listen, Raging Ally Ayakinta is an absolute nutter. Right? I love everything about this guy. I yeah. love the way he fights. He's another man that can wrestle but doesn't really use it. Remember that fight he had with Khabib? Mm. But he's all he's all out action every time he fights. And Bobby Green's the same, same way. <laughs> same. Exact same way. And yeah. Bobby Green's got a real chip on his shoulder. Exactly. He's got a real attitude I when he him. fights. And them two together. I mean, let's remember when uh, Aya Quinta beat Masvidal back in the day. Remember that? And he's like, well, mm. you're booing me. Yeah, you're booing yeah. me. You're bo and he started swearing and effing and jeffing and all the rest of it. What a great moment that was. I'm just saying that because that describes or shows, displays, demonstrates the, the chip on the shoulder that he has. Him and Bobby Green, that's going to be fireworks. And there's another home Town boy and I, I quit to fight in here in New York City. You're going for one of the debutants, yeah? Of course. Listen, Ian Gary has been absolutely sensational on the domestic circuit. Uh, picks up Cage Warriors gold without a corner team, with a knee injury. It's just, his story is insane. Can't wait to see him this week in New York. He's obviously got a team now. He's over at Sanford MMA with the likes of Michael Chandler and that. So he's, you know, he's found himself a wonderful home there. But he's, he's turned his life upside down, inside out, before he's even made his UFC debut. But I tell you what, this kid can fight and he's got the confidence to go with it. This is the start of an amazing story with him. Honestly, it's incredible. 23 years of age, making his UFC debut at MSG. Wow, yeah. special kid. Just a quick one on Alex Pereira as well, Ooh, making his UFC yes. debut. Lovely narrative there oh, with the yeah. Israel Adesanya thing, being the man that knocked him out back in the kickboxing yeah. days. Yeah, listen, you know, so yeah, obviously for those people that don't know, Pereira was a kickboxer, he knocked out Adesanya, he also, so he beat him twice, mm. once by decision, one time a knockout. So you know yeah. is he's paying attention, you know he's watching this, and you also know that the UFC, you know, if he wins, if he can put it together, if he can yeah. prove himself, because Izzy is another one that's lapping people, he's going around the block again, yeah, yeah, yeah. he needs fresh talent, he needs fresh meat, and there's a guy that knocked him out in kickboxing, come on, that's going to happen. I'm going to fast track him. There you go. 
and it's all going down at Madison Square Garden and we're lucky enough to be there and we're going to be bringing you even closer to it throughout the whole course of the week of course we're going to be sitting down with all the athletes we're going to have a little bit of a chat with Dana White as well we've got a live weigh-in show for you on Ooh. Friday come and join us for that and did you just go Ooh. <laughs> that was very family fortunes I like that and then on uh, Sunday we'll be giving you a full review of everything that goes down at UFC 268 don't forget the event goes down midnight for your prelims and then a 2am main card we'll see you there